Perform the indicated operation by hand, then use a calculator to check your work. So now we're getting into the multiplication of signed numbers. So let's just take a look at what we're going to be dealing with here. In our first problem, we're going to have a negative 3 times a negative 7. Our second problem, we have a positive 5 times a negative 8. And our last problem, we have a negative 12 times a positive 26. So hopefully you, um, you went through and, and saw in your reading and in your class preparation um, that negative times a negative will always give us a positive number. So negative times negative will always equal a positive. And so since I have negative 3 times negative 7, I know that my answer will be a positive. And since it's positive, we can put the plus sign there if we want to, but typically we don't. Typically we would just write down the number. So negative times a negative is a positive, and 3 times 7 is 21. Or we could just write the answer as just plain old 21 without showing the positive because we understand that that positive sign is there whether we, whether we write it or not. Now in our next problem, 5 times negative 8, notice that this 5 doesn't have a s negative sign up front, so that means it has to be positive. And we know that a positive times a negative will always give us a negative. So remember, this is positive times a negative. So positive times a negative is a negative. 5 times 8, we know the answer is 40. So my final answer would be negative 40. Notice when I did both of these problems, I did sort of work with the signs first and then came back and dealt with the numbers. Remember up here I said negative times a negative is a positive. 3 times 7 is 21. Down here I said positive times a negative is a negative. 5 times 8 is 40. This is a good strategy when you're doing multiplication with signed numbers. Take care of the sign first, and then you can come back and just focus on the numbers. Now, in our next problem, negative 12 times positive 26. So I've got my order different, but notice that I still have a negative number and a positive number, a positive number and a negative number. Those are still going to give me a negative answer. So a negative times a positive is always going to give me a negative. So if the signs are different, my answer is going to be negative. So negative times a positive, we know the answer is going to be negative. 12 times 26, well, I'm going to have to work that out longhand. So 12 times 26, 6 times 2 is 12, carry the 1 is 7, 6 times 1, and then 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 1 is 2, when we add that all up, we get 2, 1, carry the 1, and that's 312. So our final answer would be negative 312. Okay, so I've got my, my three answers. I've got 21. Let me just rewrite this one here. We've got 21, we've got negative 40, and we've got negative 312. So let's pull up the calculator and make sure that our answers came out right. We're going to use our negative sign down here for our negative. So negative 3, we're going to multiply that by negative 7. And you can use the parentheses or not, either way is okay. And notice that equals positive 21. Now when we do 5 times negative 8, I'm going to enter that one in a little bit differently. I'm going to use the parentheses sh to show the multiplication. 5 parentheses negative 8. And then be sure to close the parentheses if you open them. And let's see what my calculator does with that. Oh, my calculator didn't like that very much, so I'm going to go back in. I'm just going to clear that out, and I'm going to use the multiplication sign. 5 times negative 8, and sure enough, that gave us the negative 40. And then our final answer, negative 12 times positive 26. So I just enter in the 26, and that equals negative 312, just like we expected that it would be.